Okay, so I've sent you live, but the usual 20 seconds um, applies. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm trialing doing minutes today in the background, so if there's like a, 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 a hiccup, then it might take me a little bit longer to get on the mic and sort whoever out, just to let you know. Um, but yeah, from that, nothing else has changed. In that case, if we all speak very quickly, so it's very difficult for Liam to keep up, yeah? <laughs> oh dear. Right, I reckon we're ready to go, are we? Liam? Yeah, I think we're all good. Thanks. Thank you very much. Good morning, members, officers and members of the public who may be viewing the live stream for this meeting. Welcome to the meeting of the Grants Advisory Committee. I'm Councillor Jazz Howes. I'm the chair of the Grants Advisory Committee. Uh, for the information for members of the public, the role of this committee is to consider and make recommendations to the lead cabinet member for finance. That's Councillor John Williams. On applications made under the council's grant schemes, Councillor Williams then makes his decision taking into account our recommendations. Members, can you please remember to mute your microphones unless you are called to speak? Uh, and then you'll obviously need to un unmute, which is the amusing part when people start to talk when they're still muted. Um, apologies. Number one on the item, uh, number one on the uh, agenda. Um, Aaron, would you better do the roll call, please, and give us any apologies? Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Um, we have apologies from Councillor Sue Ellington today and uh, Councillor Heather Williams will be substituting for her. Um, so we've got two Councillor Williamses present today. Um, but uh, could uh, Councillor Heather Williams please uh, mark your present? Yeah, I'm here and substituting for Councillor Sue Ellington, but as I wasn't present at the previous meeting, I'll um, ab abstain from the minutes. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Daunton, please. Yes, um, I'm here, um, member for Fenditon and for Bourne Ward. Councillor Handley. Hello, yes, I'm here, Councillor uh, Bill Handley. I'm member for Over and Willingham. And I'm, you, and uh, I'm substituting for Claire Delderfield. Apologies, thank you. Um, Councillor McDonald, please. Uh, yes, good morning. It's uh, Councillor Peter MacDonald. I'm the member for Duxford Ward. Thank you very much. And Councillor Hales, clearly we are aware that you are also here. Um, Councillor John Williams, uh, Lead Cabinet Member for Finance. Can you also uh, announce yourself, please? Yes, hello there. I'm John Williams, Lead Cabinet Member for Finance and also represent Fenditton and Fallbourne Ward. Thank you very much. I can confirm that we're quorum for this meeting. Thank you, Aaron. Right, for those members of the public watching, um, the two Williams voices you heard, one's a lady, one's a gentleman, one's got a beard, one hasn't. OK, and I can obviously tell you which way around that is because I'm looking at them. So thank you very much indeed, guys. Okie doke. Um, <clears throat> officers, could I ask you to unmute and introduce yourselves? We've got uh, Catherine Hawkes, we have Aaron yes. Clark, we have a John London, and we have a Liam somewhere in the background as well. Over to you, Catherine. Sorry, I jumped the gun there. C Catherine Hawkes, I'm Programme Manager for within the Sustainable Communities and Wellbeing team. Thank you. Cheers. Aaron. Morning, thank you, Chair. Uh, Democratic Services Officer for this meeting, and I'll be clerking the minutes for the meeting today. Thanks, John. Hello, my name is John London. I am uh, the North Stone Community Development Officer and have also been running the, the Grants Advisory Committee process. Uh, sorry, the um, Community Chest processes. Thanks. And Liam? Hi there, I'm Liam. Uh, I'm the AV Officer running all of the audiovisual side of today's meeting. Brilliant. And we have uh, Lizzie McFarlane coming along. She's going to present one of our uh, service supports grant later on, but she's just running a fraction behind. Thank you very much. Um, moving on, declarations of interest. Do any members of the, um, the committee have any declarations of interest to declare in relation to any of the items on the agenda, please? If you just raise your hand and I'll, I'll call, you, call you forward. I'll take that as a no. Thank you very much. Moving on to the minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Heather Williams already said what she's going to do there. So thank you. So this will be on page one. 
of your agenda. I'll go through the normal process. Just read the page number out if you can stick your hand up and call out. So that's page one. Page two. And page three. Good. It's no amendments. Can I take that as a, from aff affirmation as that I can sign those off as a correct record? Yes. Lovely. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'll just touch the key. Item number five. Hold a minute, there was two sets of minutes, I beg your pardon. I do apologise everybody. OK, so moving on to page five <laughs> of the second set of minutes. Again, same process. Page five. Right, this was all the zero carbon uh, guys. So that's page six, page seven and page eight. Brilliant. Aaron, if you can make a note that there was no alterations to either set of minutes now that I've uh, checked myself. OK, item number five on the agenda um, is the community chest funding applications. Um, but Chairman, please, uh, could I have a question? Certainly. Um, so could I ask um, if all of the um, applicants for the um, zero carbon grants have been notified, both those that were successful and those unsuccessful? Chair, can I answer that? Please do. Uh, yeah, I can confirm that uh, all of the applicants have been notified by now at this point. Uh, the decision has gone through its uh, call-in period and uh, therefore the applicants have been able to be notified of the results. OK, thank you. It was out on face, um, social media a while back. I did see it a couple of days ago. So. Brilliant. OK, agenda item number five. This is uh, John London, I think. Please, if you don't mind, John. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, so uh, before we start on these, just to say that for all of these uh, applications, uh, the relevant councillors have been notified and that for all of these applications, we have all of the uh, correct uh, documentation has, has come in. Um, I'd also like to just, just note as an aside that we had a, a few what we would consider to be edge cases where there was a discussion amongst officers as to whether this should be brought forward to grants advisory. And the, the end result we had is that if there is a question, we should probably bring it to you and it should be you that answers that question. So we would welcome any uh, further guidance if you think actually one of these cases shouldn't have come before you. But we, we figured you should make that decision, not us. Uh, so the first John, application. Uh, John, is, sorry? John, I do apologise for interrupting you. Would you. Would you mind if you've got any of the applications today? There's five, isn't there? Uh, five, yes. Um, if any of those applications fall into the category you've just dis discussed, would you just highlight that as you come to that application? Yes, I will, Chair. Thank you. Um, so the first one falls into that category. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, this is a, um, a grant application from Meldrith Primary School PTA, and it's for the renovation of their 1960s era swimming pool at the school. The reason why this would fall into that category is because the uh, the pool uh, is, is part of the physical building of the primary school, which is owned by the county council. However, the county council um, obviously is not involved in the day-to-day -day running of the school, and the, uh, the school itself is not involved in the day-to-day -day running or the finance of the, primary, of, of the pool. An agreement was made between Meldrith Primary School and Meldrith Primary School's PTA that if the pool was to continue operation, this is a long-standing agreement, uh, that the PTA would be entirely responsible for funding the pool. Historically speaking, there has been community access for the pool. Obviously, in the last year, there's been no access for, for anyone due to, due to the pandemic. And they have noted that they, are, they have an aspiration for continued community use. However, there are other things that would need to be rectified outside of the scope of this um, grant 
before that further community use would be able to be reenacted. So this is where you can see that it's uh, it, uh, that edge case as to whether you would consider this to be replacing statutory funding from the, the county council because it is county council owned. However, no statutory funding has gone towards this swimming pool for uh, I wasn't able to get an exact uh, age. However, none of the people that are involved in it from the PTA or from the school can can remember when the school was involved in funding this. So this is a, a historical agreement that has gone back uh, quite some time. Um, they are going to the PTA are planning to fund 50% uh, of the works to renovate the pool from their own funds, 25% from community fundraising and 25% from grant applications. Uh, the extra works that need to be done for, for community access is securing uh, toilet facilities for members of the public to, to be able to use the school again. When I talk about historical community use, it has been historically still um, families that have been involved in the school, either you know parents, uh, other other family members, uh, and also the local preschool using the pool as well. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, John. Okay, members, who's got any questions? Councillor Dalton. Um, yes, well, this is a question for Councillor John Williams. Um, if he could give us his advice on how this fits with uh, school funding um, and we don't support, we can't support um, applications where the County Council should be funding this. It seems to me it's borderline, it's a good project but it's borderline so I'd like Councillor John Williams advice please. Well I think it, um, it, it it's, it's down to community access really, isn't it? Um, I mean, it's clear from from the report that um, this this swimming pool um, is not funded by the county council or the school, um, although it's on land owned by the county council. Um, it looks, um, I mean, I, I would suggest that if it had community access, then it would uh, certainly satisfy me. But it's the community access that's the issue here. Yeah, OK. Thank you. OK, thank you, John. Thank you, Claire. Uh, so right. Uh, let's follow that up, please. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll keep quiet. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, my, I had two questions. Um, one was the amount of community access and how could we satisfy ourselves that that was sufficient? Um, and secondly, it seems to me from the text here um, that they've only just started fundraising um and what we the only uh, amount that we could offer is a very very small proportion of what they would be needing um and whilst i'm very well disposed towards this i wondered if it might be better to say um to ask them to get on fundraising and then come back to us when the thousand pounds could make a difference i'm not against it but those just my thoughts for the moment thank you Claire. OK, Peter or Bill, I don't know which one of you put your hand up first. Or yeah, I Bill, you put yours down. Bill. I've put mine down because Claire's actually just asked. It's covered the point that okay. I've been made. OK, then Peter and then Heather. Uh, from, from a county council perspective, uh, I think I'm right in saying that there is there is zero funding from the county. This is all a P PTA activity. Um, and, and therefore, um, we, we can sort of take that out of the equation. I mean, it does state that uh, the pool is open at times to a wide range of community members, as it has been in the past. Um, personally, I think if you just get, you know, a verification of that and, and also uh, perhaps a um, confirmation when the funds would be raised, then, then I would be satisfied. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Um, so, so I think what I'm just going to reference something that you said earlier about um, whether they come back later, but having, having looked at things like this before, it's quite difficult to get your first grant and it's quite difficult to get your first sort of step on that on that chain. And one of the first things you're asked for is have you got, you know, what other grants have you got? Have you any sort? Of, and I, I do appreciate that this is a small amount in, you know, it's, it's a 20th or 22nd of 
for the third of what they need. But it, but I think they could really benefit from a, a, a pledge from us to that money. Um, whether we actually part with that money until later on, until they've secured more funding, uh, that's a different question. But um, I, I would be supportive of actually giving them that that start that they start that they need, really. Um, and I think it, if they have the the resources to open up to the community, um, that that's great. But um, it's definitely we can see it's in in need of some some work and and should be supported, in my view. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks. Bill. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I agree with uh, I agree with Councillor Heather Williams that um, I, I've been involved in um, raising money for a community project. And I know how important it is to get a, a good kickstart, uh, you know, get some money in the bank. It, it makes a huge difference. So I'll be supporting this. Great stuff. John. Sorry, mate, you're still you're still muted, John. Right. The, the difficulty with this is that if we um, agree to um, give them a thousand pounds towards their fundraising, that then prevents us. That takes the thousand pounds out of this year's budget. And it's clear, I think, from the report that it's very unlikely that they are going to need that thousand pounds uh, this financial year. I can't see them raising the amount of money they need and for this work anyway to be done um, until until at least the spring. Um, but the problem is that thousand pounds is not then available for someone else um, who can go ahead and do something this financial year. So I wonder whether we could indicate to them this. Yes, um, we, we are willing to give the thousand pounds. Uh, and so they have something there to show that you know, to go to other lenders and say, look, we've got a thousand pounds from South Cams, but actually ask them to um, defer it until um, next financial year. Um, because, as I say, otherwise we're going to be earmarking a thousand pounds, which won't be spent, um, that, that could be spent on another project in the meantime. I think John, Heather. Thank you, Chairman. That, I think that echoes what I was suggesting about sort of pledging pledging the money to them without potentially actually giving it until they've got more in place. Um, but I, I would be keen to hear um, officers' view as to whether they think that would um, that would actually affect. So I don't know what happened with my screen there. Um, would actually affect their ability to go off and grants. Do they actually need the money? For, for to say they've got it or are pledges sufficient? Because I I understand the what Councillor John Williams is saying, but I the whole point of what what we were saying is to give them that start. If if we then did something that prohibited them getting the start, um, that that would sort of be a bit of um that would be a downside to it. But definitely open to the idea of it. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Claire. Um, yeah, I, I, I do, um, agree with Councillor John Williams. I think that um, we can uh, encourage them um, and say that there's, um, the money um, would be there, but not uh, until next year. Uh, and also, I think just a little bit more information on community involvement. But generally speaking, I'm supportive on those grounds. Thank you. Uh, John London, please. Um, I would just like to point out uh, from the uh, from the community Just funding applications cover sheet, um, we had this uh, this year fifty eight thousand and change to spend. Uh, we currently still have in the pot forty eight and a half thousand pounds left to spend due to a historically low um, uh, number of applications due to the crisis. Right. OK. Oh, Catherine. Oh, thank you, uh, Chair. I was just going to make the same point, really, just to say that there's um, a significant amount still left in the pot, but also that the uh, group applying for the money might need to demonstrate that they actually have the cash in the bank, depending on who else they're applying to. Um, and if any of those funders decide that they want to um, caveat their funding with some initial works being done prior to them giving their grant, they won't be able to do that if they don't have some of those grants with them already so um it might inhibit them it might not but it might if we don't actually give over the money we could always do that with the caveat that they give that back 
in its entirety at the end of the year if they haven't managed to spend it, which I think is the in the um, criteria anyway. Is that the end of the year or in a 12 month period? From in, the, in 12 months from when it's granted, they would need to give it back. Right, so they'd have to give it back by December. I, I'm, mean, I'm, or, or whenever you choose. I mean, you can say yeah, you've got two right, years if you like. Enough. Ch Chair, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy in those circumstances that you know we don't need to do what I suggested. All right. Okay then, Aaron. Uh, thank you, Chair. Apologies. It was just to, to say that I don't think they need to raise the full twenty-three thousand because the applications also stated they're planning to fund fifty percent of that themselves. So uh, I think the actual amount that they need to raise is is half of that. So that sh you know you wouldn't yeah. anticipate that would be as much of a problem. Yeah. Heather. Um, it was it was just to say that given the, the advice we've had, I think we should give them the money and send the grant, but I would also be open to extending given given the, there is a scale to this project, um, allowing them say two years to spend the funding um, if, if required rather than just the one or if we can put some sort of review in place after a year rather than saying they have to give it straight back. I think that would be suitable because it's not a project where they've got a, they've got you know 200 pounds to fundraise or something it is a substantial sum and and the current climate does make it very difficult for PTAs to to fundraise so it's we're in exceptional times it might look, it might require us to be a bit more flexible than we normally would be okay thank you um well basically with regards to any money's coming back or whatever we tend to have the officer's guidance on that one, obviously they have a much more on their, their finger on the pulse of each of the applications themselves and that in conjunction with the member for finance. So I'll take your point on that one. Um, I think I'm probably feeling that we're going to grant this from what I'm, I'm hearing and seeing uh, with the caveats that if they don't spend it, then officers will review as to whether it comes back and, and do that review with John. Um, one of the questions I was going to ask, actually, just to, for clarification, John and Catherine, if you don't mind, is that um, has someone got a lot a noise going on in the background? Because I can hear a, a kind of kind of whirring sound. That that might be me. Hold on, sorry. All right. I'll just mute. Right. Okay. Um, that's better. That was your hair dryer, wasn't it? Has that resolved it? Yeah. That was your hair. Was your hair dryer? Uh, um, uh, you may think so. I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> right. It was if if we grant now, end of the financial year comes in April, yeah. So we would. It would be unrealistic to say let's have it back in April if we haven't spent it because the chances are they're not going to spend it. But that also means they can reapply for another grant. I'm assuming from April. But if they haven't spent the first one, does that negate them asking for another one? because technically they would be allowed to to apply for something else in that area, the PTA. So that was my only my only concern with this is if we if we keep it rolling for a, a 12 month period. So over to you two, Catherine or John. I, I that's that's an interesting question, Catherine. I don't know if they can actually apply for the same thing again, can they? No, uh, yeah. I haven't got the criteria in front of me. I'll try and find them. I don't know that they can apply for the same project again or for the same thing within the same project again. We can we can verify that for you and um, and as long as. Sorry, depending on whether you'd be happy to grant them something else for within the same project or not, we can we can fund on that basis. Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, Peter. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just a little bit concerned we're, we're over engineering this. Um, we have a number of questions already answered. There are a couple of questions maybe we get an answer to. We have surplus in the funds. I really would like us to get on and grant this and move on. Fair enough. Heather? Uh, similar, only only that I was going to respond and say, you know, even if they do apply, it that doesn't mean just because you apply doesn't mean you get. So. I think that's something that if it happened, we could deal with at a later time and, and not mm -hmm. something to affect our, our decision making today. 
Okay, no, thank you. Right, so I think we've got, we're agreed that we're going to grant unless anyone sings out and says no. So I'm going to take that as unanimous. Okay, Aaron and John, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, John, over to you for number two. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, uh, application number two is from an organisation, a charity, Cambridge Past and Present. Uh, and it is for Bourne Windmill, which is a windmill that was uh, in operation from the 1600s un until the 20th century and is one of the oldest windmills in the country. Uh, it's a tourist attraction in the village of Bourne. And uh, I, I, uh, I know that several members are, are familiar with this with this particular attraction. I was chatting to uh, Cambridge, uh, sorry, to um, uh, Cambridge past, present and future about this. Um, they underwent some routine investigations of the beams that hold up. It's sort of like a like a big X of wooden beams that holds up the entire windmill, and then takes two people to push it around to to, to move it into the into the wind. And they found that there were some um, you know, quote unquote repairs made to those beams uh, back in the 1980s using cement. Um, they they were aware there was a small amount of cement, but they didn't realise that someone had come in and filled in the entire uh, the, the inside of the beams. Um, cement obviously will will trap water. There was rot, and they were unfortunately unable to complete the um, uh, complete the uh, the investigation because the uh, the investigator <laughs> refused to be near it because he felt that it was so bad it might uh, collapse. It's therefore been closed to members of the public and put at the Heritage at Risk Register by Historic England. They've been very, very um, clear with regards to the funds that would be brought forwards, which is that there are um, uh, a set of things that need to happen in quick succession. So the first thing that they need to do is to get some emergency scaffolding underneath it just in case it does collapse. Uh, and then they're going to be finishing the investigation. And then once that investigation uh, by the professional is complete, they'll be able to know the order of works for for renovating um, the windmill. They've been unable to give a total project cost because that um, investigation was not unable to be completed, but they estimated it would be about 80K to get it sorted. They have raised 26K so far. And as I say, this £1,000 will be towards whatever is the next uh, emergency thing that needs to happen in, in that process. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Dalton. Um, Chairman, I'm sorry, I should have said this before. Um, my husband is a commissioner for Historic England, so I don't know, and they have had money from, I don't know whether I can comment on this. Could I have some advice on that? Aaron. Yeah, so sorry, your husband is a, is a commissioner. He's a commissioner for Historic England, yeah. So obviously he's been involved in um, the discussions and the funding for this. So I don't know whether I should comment. I'm really sorry, I should have said that at the beginning and I had read it before, but. Um, That's all right, things, things happen. Uh, it's, a, it's a slightly difficult one. I mean, in a sense, you know, he, he, you know, he doesn't. That there is no, there's no benefit to be gained from any funding. Um, you know, so I would say that that's a, a non-pecuniary non-pecuniary interest. interest. Okay, then I will comment. Uh, but I'll okay. later. Okay, Bill. I, I was just going to suggest what Aaron's just said. It's non-pecuniary interest. Um, I, I, I would suggest that we. If, if Claire's uncomfortable, I, I get the feeling that we may approve this even without her vote. But anyway. That's um that's another way. That's another that's by the way. Okay. That was all I wanted to say. All right. Thanks. Okay, okay, then members, got any questions for John and the team? Unusual. Okay. Ooh. In that case then we may as well just move straight to the vote. Just stick your hand up if you support it. One, two, three, four, myself included. Thank you very much. That's a recommendation to finance. Lead as a recommendation. Number three, please, John. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is another one that is um, 
possibly uh, an edge case. It's less of an edge case than the last uh, than the first one, but it's still in that we we had conversations about it. So this is a uh, 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 an application from Ladybird Playgroup in Thriplo. Uh, they are a registered charity. There is a phone going off. Sorry, that's me. <laughs> Good, um, cost me a tenner. Um, um, like ten pound terms, I know, I know, I know. Serves me right. <laughs> Carry on, John. Thank you, Chair. Um, so basically speaking, uh, the uh, the uh, Ladybird Playgroup is responsible for the um, uh, the physical area that their charity occupies, uh, which is part of the local school. Uh, the school is owned by Diocese of Ely Multi Academy Trust (DMAT), which is also uh, an independent charity, but you know they're they're a, they're a uh, multi academy trust. Um, the matting needs to be updated. I have received some pictures of the matting um, uh, just after this application was put in. It's fairly standard um, rubberized play matting. It's coming up in the corners. It, nothing, nothing particularly special. Um, the question is whether or not that would be um, uh, allowed as it is uh, uh, technically within within the the area of the, of the school. Uh, and I know that there has been some some conversations previously about funds going towards uh, multi academy trusts. Uh, the uh, leasehold is a twenty year leasehold with with Ladybird Playgroup. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, John. Uh, Heather. Thank you. I, I'm not going to pretend to be a, an expert on ground matting. So this may sound like a very simple question, um, but I think for me the, the issue is, yes, it's an equipment council purposes, but is it something that could be moved if, if they chose to move? Or is it something that once laid down is, is permanent and you can't remove? Uh, it would not be something that you would be able to remove again. It's not matting that you would lay down. It's um, if you if you uh, have sort of a mental image of a school playground and you have that sort of colourful shredded um, rubber substance, usually made out of recycled, that then gets laid out on the floor. They tend to survive for five, ten years. So oh, I wouldn't okay. necessarily consider it to be a a a a. a yeah. it, it will definitely. It will definitely not be of any use by the end of the leasehold of Ladybird Playgroup. Thank you. That was that was what I was asking. Uh, Bill, uh, I'm just really asking for advice on this one. Um, it doesn't appear that there's going to be any community use for this. It's uh, it's very much just for the Ladybird Playgroup, um, and it's connected to. Um, an educational trust gives me some difficulties really but I, I, I'm willing I'm happy to take advice on whether or not that's something that I should can be concerned about the fact that it's not going to be used for community you know for, it's not available for community use um from our understanding of the uh the guidelines uh the reason why um the reason why we don't normally fund educational uh, a, a, edu educational act, uh, uh, grants is because the funding would normally come through from uh, the county council. Uh, so if, if, for example, this had come through from uh, uh, the school itself for the use by year one, for example, uh, then we would we would have clearly not brought this forward to you. However, uh, place playgroups and um, uh, nurseries are not funded by a statutory body. They are independent charities and therefore, as far as we are aware, this would come under the same uh, application process as, for example, if the um, the local scouts had applied for something for, for their area. Um, So that's that. That's our understanding of 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 the situation. Thank you, uh, Claire. Yeah, I'm. Um, I think I think that's answered my question. Um, and and if as is clear, 
um, it's a, an independent charity, I would be happy to support this. Peter? Um, yeah, yes, likewise. I mean, following on from John's observations, um, th there is no link with, with the diocese, that's clear. They have a registered charity number uh, um, and they're clearly independent and, and therefore we have to have to assess them as such. Thank you. Hands down, guys, if you've got your hands up. Claire, hey. Right, OK. Um, I think the simplest thing here, I mean, I'm going to, I don't know if you want to say anything, uh, John Williams. Um, yeah, just that uh, John, John said it all, really. I, I yeah. think it does meet our criteria. That's what I thought. OK, can we just have a show of hands then, please? All those in favour? That's all of us, Aaron, including me. Yeah. Thank you. In that case, John number four, please. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, this is another one from a preschool, Hazlingfield Little Owls Preschool in Hazlingfield, funnily enough. And this is for a uh, materials and equipment capital purchase. Um, because this is a capital purchase, the, the landowner shouldn't really matter that much. But in this case, it isn't uh, a school. It's the local Methodist church. And what they have applied for, it's, uh, it's a really interesting one, uh, which is for some woodworking uh, tools for use by the pupils aged two to four. And um, these uh, these woodworking tools and uh, a small amount of um, uh, materials that will go with them and safety equipment uh, will be uh, on, only for the use of, of, of the children at the preschool. And I, I think it is it is worth noting. I didn't include it all in this uh, documentation. However, obviously, we phoned up the uh, uh, the preschool and asked some searching questions about health and safety uh, with regards to uh, children using uh, woodworking tools. And we were I, I, I am satisfied that uh, the school has done uh, or that the um, uh, that the nursery has done due diligence and has um, uh, good um, uh, experts in place to, to look at this and was able to show me uh, evidence that other preschools uh, are, are doing similar things. So uh, this is this is not a, a, a one off project by this particular school. This is part of a, a wider thing that is happening in, in other preschools and is a, a sort of a known educational thing for for preschools. The uh, exact list of equipment, it's it's quite a long list of of, of items and they're asking us for the the, the total funding cost for this uh, of nine hundred and twenty four pounds and twenty five pence. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, John. I have to say. I love the picture and it looks like it's proper tools. It's actually not children being wrapped in cushions and being given blunt pairs of scissors to try and cut a bit of paper. I absolutely, without wishing to sound predetermined, love this. I think it's absolutely tip top. Right, let's go to the gang. Heather, you were up first, then, then Claire, please. Thank you. And I'm slightly biased of a, of a, of a three year old that has done whistling at her preschool um, and the children. Well, she definitely loves it. And also, you know, quite often it's it's outside when they do things. It's it's really encouraging good, good behaviour long term, exactly what it says um, and wanting to fix things and actually being quite inventive and, and everything else I, and I'm aware that they're applying for the, the full grant but as I said earlier it's so difficult to fundraise and do other things at the moment and I I think they should be really endorsed and supported and I wish them all the best because it looks I wish I could have a go I wish they were doing that in my school <laughs> not so long ago of course that I was there <laughs> what's the nursery you are you hear me ask okay Claire Claire, no. I'm supporting, um, if only because the three little people in the photograph are all girls. Oh, perhaps on that basis, then we, should not, we should not knock it back. This is about equality, surely. We should have a picture of a boy in there as well. Right, that's it. Let's, let's not do it then. <laughs> right, OK, hang on, John. Hold on, I know what. 
Go on, I, then. I, I, Go on. I will say just just because it was pointed out, I will say that this was uh, these are not um, uh, pupils at that school because obviously they haven't had uh, the uh, the equipment yet. This was um, provided and is is part of, of of the sort of the grander scheme of things. But just to say those are a representative children, not the actual children. <laughs> In the in the likely event of them being funded, could you put your hand down, Claire, as well, please? Um, uh, could you ask them then, John, to send pictures that in their in their report? Because I think this is worth a, a million pounds, frankly. Right, um, Bill, you did have your hand up. Peter still got his hand up. I'm just supportive. Okay. Simple, simple as that. Jeez. Yeah, was I uh, just wanted to make a similar point to uh, two points. Uh, first of all, um, most of the carpenters that I know are men. So uh, I think this is a pretty positive sign for diversity. And and I was wondering whether they were building a stable, uh, given it's this time of the year. Well, well done, Peter. To, they're they're going to have to crack on a bit, aren't they? <laughs> right. It's not just cutting up. They've got to learn joinery, otherwise it'll come down. Right. OK, gang, I think this is a no brainer and um, that would be that. So I'd, I'm assuming it's a, it's a positive. If you don't, put your hand up. If you don't support it, put your hand up. Okay, thought I'd catch you out. That's lovely. Aaron, that's a, that's a hundred percent again. Uh, John, number five, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, this one was also a uh, uh, an extreme edge case. This was the one that started us thinking about whether we should really bring things to you or not. So this is a. Um, uh, an application from uh, Thriflow School PTA. Uh, interestingly enough, this is the primary school that the uh, uh, the uh, Ladybird playgroup is at. However, it's an entirely separate application from a separate separate organisation. They had no knowledge of each other's applications, um, and the school does not have enough iPads for use by um, by the children in the school. And the PTA has taken on board the task of fundraising to bring up the number of iPads in the in the pot that the school has. Um, in their application, they did mention obviously um, working from home and the difficulties of uh, uh, the, the difficulties encountered um, from uh, educating people in, in in 2020 with all of the issues. Um, the reason why we were unsure whether we should bring this to you is obviously there is there is no community access. It will be just for the children in the school. Uh, however, it is an application being brought forward by the PTA, not by the school, and it is being brought forward because funding has already been declined for extra iPads by the by the county council. So we decided that it would be up to you to make that decision, not us. Oh joy. OK, Bill first, then Claire. This gives me a lot of trouble. Uh, I, 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 um, I'm all for raising the amount of IT equipment in schools, but um, the, the Ely Academy Trust and the County Council ought to be paying for this, not us. That's my view. Claire. Um, yes, I feel the same. I'm, I'm a governor of Great Wilburham Primary School and we um, really, really struggle with the provision of iPads and the PTA has to work hard to raise the money for them because they, uh, they've only got one actually. So uh, we shouldn't be funding what is the proper responsibility of other people to fund. Thanks Claire. John Williams. Thank, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I agree with Claire. Um, you know, I looked at this and I thought, actually, um, there's no difference between this. I don't know if you remember, but we had an application from um, Linton uh, Village yeah. College PTA about yeah. refurbishing uh, a swimming pool, which was the ownership of um, the County Council. And, um, and unlike um, the previous application about the swimming pool um, that we had that we had earlier. Um, this was actually a property of of the county council, and should have been um, 
you know, maintained by the county council. And also on the Meldrift Primary School, that would be open to the community. Um, this isn't open to the community. And this is something that should be provided by the trust. I'm sorry, I, I, I believe that the, um, the Diocese of Ely's got tons of money, to be honest with you. Um, I think it's appalling that they are not supplying their schools with sufficient iPads. And I don't think it's in our gift to do it. It's not it's not something that we should be doing. So whatever you say, I will be turning this one down. Sorry. Fair enough. Um, Heather. So I, th I think this one is, is difficult. I don't think it's as clear cut as perhaps it's been made out. I think I think there is a balance in here because, you know, it's, it's common practice that PTAs do try to raise money for equipment. I remember my, my dad as part of the PTA at my school, the first computer that was in our in our school was raised by the PTA um, in, in the classroom. And and it's not as if, you know, I know they're, they're obviously as funny, they're saying more. So there obviously has been some some provision been made and, you know, the provision will probably have to be quite um, quite widespread throughout the county for, for the county council. So I, I don't think I, I think it's difficult because what they want to do is have more to give more children access. And that's something that I can't I can't find to disagree with. The amount that they're applying for is very high to the total project cost. Um, and I can understand I can understand the comments that have been made by others. I I just I feel a bit uncomfortable saying no full stop. Um, it'd be nice if we could contribute something might not be the full amount. But if we could could give them something, I think because, as I say, PTAs are really struggling to fundraise at the moment with the current restrictions. It's something that in a normal in a normal year that they'd have, have had a summer fete, they'd have had a bonfire night, something that would have raised this money for those for those needs of the school, and, and they can't do that at the moment. So I I do feel feel torn. Um, I agree the amount applied for is is too high a percentage, but I. I don't feel comfortable saying no full stop. Um, Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Right, Peter's next. And before you start, Pete, John, you've still got your hand up. Was that legacy? And Claire, you've got your hand up. Is that to come back again? Yeah, can I, can, I, can, I, can I just come back on what Councillor Heather Williams has said? Cool. You know, it is, it is not a parent's responsibility to fund essential equipment for their school is a government responsibility. You know, PTAs are there to raise things for, for like to have things, not essential things. Essential things should be provided by the government or, or the local education authority or the academy trust. And I, I totally disagree that parents should be funding essential equipment for their children's education, full stop. OK, right. Before I come back to Peter, you were next. Um, yeah, all, all I would uh, like to say is I, I think in the new year we should just have a brief review um, in anticipation of other PTA uh, submissions. I, I do agree with John that it isn't the function of uh, of this fund to to backfill shortfalls in in educational provision that that's that's not what we're about however that there, there be many pta submissions for things uh which um are available to the wider community and and we've granted those and i think that's been right and so in the new year i'd just like to have uh, at one of the committee meetings or even offline a discussion about clarifying that policy because it also, to be fair to PTAs, if they continue to submit, I don't want them to be disappointed and, and perhaps not understanding why we as a council are, are turning that down. So so it might help the communication with the with the various parent teachers associations. Thank you, Pete. Claire. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I, I agree with Peter and just want to um, note that we have supported PTA 
um, projects in the past where there's been community involvement. Um, and I just wanted to make it clear um, in my remarks that I do wholeheartedly support the work of PTAs, um, but I think this is something slightly different. Thank you. I'm going to have to take pennies before I come to Heather. Um, it is difficult. I too support the PTA and the work they do. What I'm surprised about actually is that the, the Triplo School has got a heck of a reputation. It really has. Um, it's a very sought after school. People fight tooth and nail to get their children in there from, from around here. And I'm surprised that they couldn't have, get, collect 984 pounds or 1181 pounds and 84 pence. I really don't. I, I, it surprises me, even with a raffle that you don't have to do, you can socially distance. It just seems to me to be something that there hasn't been much thought going to this, if you like, um, to explain why they've come to us for um, a grant funding um, sum of money because something else has failed somewhere down the line and couldn't do something else somewhere else. So anyway, that's that's my thoughts. Um, I, I am I am personally coming down on the side of I'm surprised you haven't been able to fund this from somewhere else. Um, and I'm not that inclined. Um, Claire, you still got your hand up. Could you put that down? Heather, please. Thank you. Um, I, I think I think it's not quite fair to say that when that it's a failure to provide essential equipment because without knowing how many they already have, because I think the issue is that they want some more to give, um, you know, every every child, but they the moment they're sharing. So if they're all sharing one, then that's a very different different sort of issue if if you've got 10 children trying to share one or if you've got five or six children trying to share share three you know then that's almost one for two so I, I don't think we can really comment with the information we've got there about what is or isn't failing to be provided we've got a PTA that wants to to do more and as I said I do think that the the total applied for is is too high um but I, I stand by what I said that I don't feel comfortable saying no outright. I, I think it'd be nice to offer them some, but I'd also question what the point is of us even coming to a conclusion, because as we've as we've heard, Councillor John Williams has said, regardless of what we say, he's going to refuse it. So, Chairman, with, with the greatest respect, I think that, you know, we're, we're in a pointless situation if whatever, even if we were to approve it, is going to get refused. So, you know, the, um, perhaps we should just let me let me, let me let me interrupt you, uh, Heather. Right. Um, one thing that I, I pride myself on on this committee is that we have our two penneth. You've had your two penneth and you will continue to have your two penneth as long as this committee session runs. Um, John is entitled to his opinion, but there may be something down the line in our discussions that we come back to John London in a minute and we'll come back to Claire in a second. But there may be something that for whatever reason changes his mind. So I'm going to stick my my foot down and we're going to be extremely polite to each other. Every little, every single one of us are going to be very polite to each other from now on. John, over to you then coming to Claire. Thank you very much. Um, just just uh, coming back to uh, Councillor Heather Williams point about numbers of iPads. Um, I they when when I phoned up the PTA, they have uh, they, they didn't give me an exact number, but they said that for their largest group, they have at least one between two and for their smallest class group, uh, they don't have enough for one iPad for every child. They are they, they have a uh, an ambition to get to the point where even the largest group has one iPad per child. And I'm aware that they have made um, multiple other funding bids uh, to other organizations um, but they, they they just wanted to sort of keep everything uh, separate for their for their own reasons so you know they've they've, they've funded asked us to fund three they'll be asking somebody else to fund another three they'll be fundraising to do another however many uh, until they get up to their up to their target number 
Thank you, John Clare. You're muted, Claire. I suspect we might be getting more of these applications. Um, the more uh, that uh, the COVID restrictions go on and the more people are doing online learning. Um, so I do endorse Peter's um, suggestion that we come back and, and we look at PTAs, but it doesn't change my mind um, in respect of this particular application. But I do think PTA applications would uh, deserve a special um, discussion. Thank you very much. You take your hand down, please, Claire. OK. Catherine, were you going to? I just I don't seem to be able to raise my hand on the with the the icon do, there, but do, just do that. Do that. Look. Here they are. <laughs> I have them. Uh, just wanted to say we can bring you some proposals for changes to wording within the criteria at a future meeting. So it's not. OK, thank you. Um, right, members, I get the impression from comments that we are likely to refuse this. On the basis of refusal and the basis that Peter's suggestion endorsed by Claire that we we have a little chat perhaps in the new year as to with officers recommendations for how we may or may not tweak the PTA side of of application going forward, even if it's on a temporary basis because of what's happened this year. Would you would you support the the, the refusal this time, but with the encouragement, if those discussions in the new year change, what we may or may not um, support, that we ask officers to contact the Triplo PTA and ask them to either resubmit or we just uh, live up this access, this application, and make a a decision on the next the next available committee. How does that sound? Yeah, yeah. Um, Joe, could I could I comment? Yeah. So yeah. I, th I think when we've 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 done a, a brief review, we sort of refresh the guidelines and and issue those to parent teachers associations, um, and and uh, identify over the past twelve months um, projects that have been approved and why, and those that haven't and why, and and I think that will help them a lot. Okay, thank you. Right, guys, you'll notice that Bill. Okay. Uh, Bill, just before you go, uh, are you are you going to refuse? My position hasn't changed since my first right. comment. Okay. Yeah, I will. I would vote right. against this. Okay, Bill's not going, guys. He's just going to um, pay his respects to the oldest member of his village who's just passed away and is is going past. I think in a in a procession. So he'll be back, but he's just so we've got his vote already. Can I have a show of hands for support, please? And may I have a show of hands for refusal? And I'll take Bill as that. And uh, Heather, how would you like to vote? Would you like to abstain? Yes, Chairman, because uh, I don't agree with the amount, but I also don't agree we shouldn't be funding. Thank you. Could you make a note of that, please, Aaron? Thank you very much. Right. John, you're done. Um, Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'd just like to, um, for Bells and Braces, confirm that uh, we have said yes to the pool. Um, we have said yes to the windmill. We have said yes to ladybirds. We have said yes to working with the caveat that they need to send us cute pictures. And um, we have said no to the iPads as it would replace statutory funding with no community use. However, um, we will possibly be changing the guidelines and we'll notify you if that change uh, affects this application. Okay. Would you mind using the word review rather than change, just in case we stay as we are, if you wouldn't mind, please? I've changed that. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much, John and Catherine, for your, uh, your efforts on this. Are you staying or going? Um, if you would allow me to leave, I've got a sick daughter in the other room, so I'm probably oh. going to head off if that's OK. Uh, well, I hope I wish her well and I wish you and you and yours a very happy Christmas New Year from all of us, I'm assuming. We shall do yes, it. Yes, certainly. Then. Yes. Bye. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas from uh, from us to all of you. Thank you very I much. hope she's Thanks, better for Christmas. Thank you, John. You're stuck Thanks. with me for a little bit longer. I'm staying with Leslie. Okay, thank you. Right now, we've got Leslie's coming, Leslie McFarlane. 
Hi, Leslie. Hi, thank you, Chair. Uh, firstly, apologies that my camera, I have another malfunction, so it's not working again today. Um, so I'm bringing the uh, service support grant update. This report is um, to update members on Q1 and Q2 performance for the organisations which are in receipt of um, greater than £15,000 um, unless otherwise uh, requested. And this is as part of their um, contractual agreements. Um, I think I'd also like to note as well that we have been in contact regularly with all of these organisations. So, um, you know, just monitoring the impacts of COVID. And we have, I think we took a report at the end of September September possibly, I can't remember exactly, maybe in October. So there shouldn't really be any surprises um, uh, in the, the reports that we've received. But yes, kind of over to you now for, for comment. Chair, you're on, you're on mute, I'm afraid. Do you know, it's been, I, I really tried hard not to get catch myself out. Mm -hmm. My phone rang, just as an explanation. I'm going to pay me 10 quid, that's fine. But it's my wedding ring that I've put into the jewellers to have mended. And that was the jewellers telling me that my, my beloved, her, her gold band of my, my anchor, <laughs> is ready for collection. So that's now going to cost me 10 quid more. Right, OK. Um, <laughs> um, may I go with Claire? I, I, I looked up at the same time. I think you both pinged at the same time, so. Um, yeah, uh, thank you. Um, so um, I, I really enjoyed uh, reading these reports um, and I was particularly struck by the good work of all of them, but particularly the Citizens Advice Bureau and um, the uh, background information that we were given. Um, I, I think it's really good that we can support organisations like that and also good that we ask them for reports. Um, because it, it really helps us to understand what's going on across uh, the district in our communities. Um, and I want to just put in a special word for the Farmland Museum um, because they've done a lot of work in the last two years to uh, reach out. I hate that phrase, I know, but I can't think of a better one than reaching <laughs> out. Uh, in this case, I think it really does mean reaching out to the community. Um, and. I think they've really tried their best to um, cover the times when they had to be closed. Um, and as you know from their previous presentations, they do depend um, on us a lot for their work. Um, and they've really tried to modernise themselves. Um, and so it's really good to hear um, what they're doing and um, the fact that they've really sort of taken on board um, the lockdown and, and used it uh, for benefit. Thank you, Claire. Uh, I'm going to help you out, Claire, with you don't like the, what was that phrase you just said that you don't like? So I'm going to say that the Farm Museum have ploughed on during the pandemic, right? <laughs> you're all you're all Thanks. welcome to come up with some and I've got another little gem, OK? They've sown the seeds for the for this coming year. <laughs> OK, boys and girls, uh, over to you, Heather, you're next. <laughs> I feel like I've just opened my Christmas cracker um, <laughs> with the jokes, but uh, and and yeah, um, and and farmers have most definitely ploughed on f throughout all this. Indeed. But um, and uh, even some councils have got roped into the back of uh, potato harvesters because of uh, COVID restrictions and households. So it's <laughs> they've done they've done they've done really well, and I've done my shift. Um, but I was just going to say I was really surprised pleasantly surprised about the statuses. It's completely understandable the Farmland Museum, you know, that they've had delays, but the fact that everyone has managed to stay on track with, with what they're already planning under the circumstances, particularly things like the CCBS and what have you, um, I think is, is really good to be applauded and, and I think that's all I have to say really. Fantastic. Pete? Uh, thanks. Yeah, uh, I'd like to, I'd like us to write to citizen advice to say two things first of all to thank them um for what they've what they've been doing um and and secondly to ask them to to keep us up to date if you look at the age profile of um the people they're engaging with um a lot of young people in their 30s 
and I, I fear this is going to become a theme of the next six months post COVID. Um, so I, I just uh, like to thank them, acknowledge what they've done because they've done fantastic work. Please tell them somebody that I read the case studies. The case studies are amazing uh, of, of what they've done. Uh, the case studies are generally older people. Um, so, you know, we, we continue to, to support them and, and I'd like to hear more because uh, I think those in that age group, I mean, a lot of age groups are affected, but but the chart shows that the, ma the main advice they're giving is between those between 30 and 39 years old. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a tr difficult year. <laughs> difficult, difficult year coming up. Um, Pete, your hand's still up, Claire. Um, yes, thank you. Um, I, also, I meant to say that um, there's some interesting information on the community car schemes. I mean, on page 39, it talks about the full fullborn community car scheme, which we were hearing about recently at the Parish Council, um, which is, is good, so positive. But I think we don't make enough of the fact that South Cams funds these schemes. I mean, that's not always mentioned when they are discussed. And it, in, in the case of these schemes here, it's made a significant difference. So um, that's perhaps a, a call to the officers. Um, you know, could we perhaps make sure that their funding is acknowledged? Thank you. OK, Leslie. Yeah, um, I also just wanted to add as well that I don't know whether members were aware that the government issued a winter support grant to the kind of upper tier authorities and much of that money was spent on voucher schemes for school meals, but a, a great proportion of that also went for additional funding for citizens advice and for the Cambridgeshire local assistance. So in addition to the funding that we've been given them, I think they've also received quite a large amount of funding to just increase capacity in anticipation of the demand as a result of COVID. So I thought you might be pleased to know that. Thank you. That's really that's heartwarming, actually. Um, OK. Remind me, we have recommendations. Um, Chairman, could I have another question? Yes, please, please um, do. Yeah, on page 43, um, we've got um, a note developing a profile of informal group activity. So I've got two questions then. Um, one is, um, could uh, members be made aware of what's going on there in developing a profile? Um, so we all know what's going on across the district and in our own wards. And secondly, um, just to note, as, as you will know, um, that in our um, task and finish group, we're also um, c kind of working on this, aren't we? Um, yeah, I was going to say that, there's yeah, a newsletter now. Yeah. yeah, so it, just so that that's coordinated in the um, communities team. Thanks, Claire. Leslie, just as a quickie, um, I seem to remember seeing an email that you were uh, either sent or copied into and then made comment with Cecilia with regards to the newsletter. Is that correct? Um, sorry, in response to the, the Cecilia is doing. Um, I'm just sorry, remember if his name members of the public. Is Cecilia is one of our officers, and she's in the communities team. And so that she's doing a newsletter, or she, her and Jay are doing a newsletter, um, which is listing yeah. help sources and what have you. I am certain I saw your name as part of the mobile warden scheme response and what have you. So, as Claire rightly said, if there's anything in here that can be transposed and put into that as information as how we're going to do it. it there, there may be just another little another little edge that people can be aware of. Absolutely. Um, well, I'll have a look. I, I think Cecilia's newsletter is fairly comprehensive uh, and includes yeah. a lot of this support that is available from the yeah, third it does, sector. It does. I will, I'll cross reference. Thank yeah. you so much. That's really kind. Thank you. OK. Um, Members, I don't see any hands up. Officers, obviously. Uh, Leslie, if you've got anything else you'd like to say, then great. If not, uh, Catherine? No, nothing from me. No. OK, Liam, did you manage to minute that lot? <laughs> uh, I think so. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll get Aaron to check them later on and give you marks out of 10. All right. OK. 
Right then, that was agenda item number six. So I think we, we just have to, we're just noting this, aren't we? And expressing our gratitude. Correct me if I'm wrong, Leslie, we just, we just. Yes, just, I mean, it's really just to review just, and yeah. if you had any concerns um, to, no, you we know. Don't. We don't. Ask us to make any additional inquiries. Well, other than what's been already discussed, then no, it's wonderful. Thank you very much for bringing that. Uh, that's super. I, as I'm happy to send a brief, uh, a sort of a, a, a letter to uh, CAB on behalf of the uh, Grants Advisory Committee, just thanking them. Yeah, that would be lovely. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want that to go in your name? Any of you as members or would be on your behalf? It'll be John Williams is the lead sure. member for finance, so if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Great. In that case, the nice bit now, if you like, is that we our days can continue elsewhere. There's potato picking, apparently, and other stuff to be done. Um, thank you very much, uh, colleagues, officer and member, for coming today, doing what you've done. That's brilliant. Next next committee meeting will be Friday, the 29th of January, 2021 at 10 a.m. I imagine it will be in the same format as we're looking at each other now, probably until the end of next year by the sound of it. OK, thank you very much indeed and uh, have a jolly good day. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Chair. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And Merry Liam. Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas. Thanks. Great. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Liam. Can you kill the feed? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Thanks very much. I must choose a different